using a standard a board, it's a standard um, canvas board. Um, and I put a back colour on it, an underpainting. Um, so a very thin wash of um, something fairly centrally pitched for value, so mid-tone. Um, I tend to err towards, if I'm painting something fairly cool, um, I will try and pitch it sort of mid to green. The other thing is that you need to be able to know exactly where your centre is, and then if you're using a reference or whatever it might be, even if you're using a, a viewfinder and you're looking at a, a subject in life, a viewfinder is quite valuable because you can see exactly where you're painting and it will help you with your crop. Um, it's to check where your centre is on your board and you don't have to physically draw it on your, on your reference but it can be quite helpful. But you don't need to grin it up, that's not necessary. And my reason behind this is I love the way the light's coming through the work, the, the boats. I love the way the shadows are falling. I love the way the, the light and the shape of those boats against the wall, the dark wall and the light in the sky and the sand really reverberates. So I think that's the bit that I really want to portray. And just start to build the shape of that boat. That's a little bit more. Just start to build the shape of that so I can start to feel what's going on. Now I may alter certain things in this construction only because I might want to actually just give it a little bit more dynamism. I'm just going to put the top of the boat in there, that's the cabin, um, a bit of shape there. Also one thing you'll notice is I'm actually standing quite a long way back from the, the board or the painting that I'm doing. The reason for that is I can see what I'm doing. I know that sounds a bit strange but it's so much easier standing back and looking at what you're doing rather than you know being cramped up to the to the subject and also to the to the board because you will find that the more you closer you get the smaller your view and you will end up with quite a, a difference in in your a vision your vision will be quite impaired by being so close so do be careful when you're painting to, to be quite strong in where you stand. It can be quite, or sit. Of course, some of you will sit. It's not the right angle, it's the right angle. That's coming there, that's coming down there. Um, that's disappearing off the page. And just making sure I've got that angle right there. Um, that's cutting back there, a little bit flatter, and we've got the wall there. And then that comes along here, there. Then at the back there, let's see it comes pretty much a lot. I'm just going to put some light in here because that's where the, there's some standing water. So I want to put those, that light back in those areas there. Now I'm using my brush quite flat. The reason I'm using it flat because I don't want necessarily to give... If you use your brush flat like this on the page or on the canvas, you'll find you'll get quite a lot of texture because you're dragging the paint across the texture of the, of the canvas tooth. If you want more, less texture, you either stand your brush up so it goes into the tooth and you press harder, or, or you, you move your brush very quickly so that you don't end up um, leaving too much paint behind. So I'm lightening this area up because I can see that that needs to be, to be lighter there. So I'm just scuffing that in because it doesn't need to be particularly well painted when I say well painted, carefully painted. It's only careful in as much as I'm careful in where I put it. I'm not careful in the fact that I'm making it all wonderfully smooth and lovely because it doesn't need to be. Because what I'm laying it on is, is something that is, um, is a rough texture. So I don't want to create um, a texture on something that is smooth, but I do want to create a texture on something that needs it. And that's what I'm doing here. Now this is, at this stage now, it needs to be sort of the, I'll say the final stage, but I mean the final stage in as much that it needs to be the final approach. I don't want to have to go big back into this again. So I'm looking at perhaps a little bit more blue in there. But it's because it's so dark, one of the things about shadow you should be very careful about is that not, not making your shadow too dark 
you've got to put some life in your shadows. So your shadows should always have a little bit of life in them. Um, because otherwise what happens is that they tend to look completely dead. So don't paint your shadows so dark that they end up looking clogged up. You've got to put some life in them. Um, and that's what I've, I've done there. There's a little bit of light around there to make them look so bright um, that they end up looking false. I can put a little bit of light in there now, just coming through. It's a little bit more light there. I can feel, whoops, that's probably a bit too much. Just lift that off a little bit. It's better. Um, and a little bit of dark where the cabin is sort of showing through there. Talk, the way I do it really very much is talk to myself, as you can see, <laughs> about what I'm doing and why. You know, almost say to yourself, there's a bit of cabin in there. So I want to show that bit of cabin. So, you know, actually talk to yourself and say, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to put that cabin in there. That's what I'm doing. Um, right, let's just put that, the actual prow of the boat there is quite strong. But I want to make it, you know, almost subtle, but not too... I can't see that side because it disappears out of the painting. But I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to paint it in its... As if it was a little lighter. So I feel it, I feel the light should be hitting that. So I'm going to paint that quite light there. Um, and as the light hits the top of the cabin, um, there's I think what's on top there looks like some sort of life jackets or something. So I'm going to paint some sort of uh, orangey light there, which sort of indicates there's some activity going on in there. That's cool, that's fine. Now I'm going to look under the, um, under the actual, underneath the boat where the colour changes from blue to red and it's very subtle indeed, almost non-existent. So I'm going to go under there and really put in that sort of quite dull, dark red. And even if you do, I'll deny it. <coughs> I'm just going to put a bit of light here, there's a bit of light coming down there. It's creeping around that corner bit of light there and this side I think maybe I've liked that too much I'm going to go in and just make that light there too um, and underneath there it's gone I don't know what's going on there actually what's that that's also dark red isn't it very similar colour so I'm going to put a little bit of that red back in there it's gone blue because I picked up some blue but that's alright and then I'll go in and just drop a little bit of light there just to lift that out so I'm going to put a little bit of light back in there because that's where it, this is the bits that really show that the, where the how the boat is sitting. That's all right because it's in the shadow anyway, so it can't be too bright. Now um, let's have a look around. I'm not happy with this side of the thingy bob here. I need to have one more look at this because I'm still not happy with that. I need a bit more green. By the way, sap green is the only green I ever use. I never use any other green. The reason for that is I can modify sap green to give me any green I want pretty much. So I can add blue to it and make it darker. I can add yellow to it to make it lighter or red to make it more neutral. So I can do all sorts of things with sap green. So it's a really good um, colour to, to get yourself involved with. That's one of the colours I forgot to mention I think when you, somebody asked me about what colours I use. So sap green. Put it on your list. Okay, right, let's just put a bit more going on here to make your painting look, look more real. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of light now. Behind those, this boat here, I've not really completed the sea. So I'm going to go back into that now and just finish off that bit of sea there. Bonk, bonk. And then there and there. <coughs> and there. Right there. Um, so. Some people are on the pitch and think it's all over, but it is now. 